Good day everybody out there. This is my first YouTube uh, video ever. And and I'm doing it for the face of addictions. I want to help try to save the kids of the future. I'm Harold Williams from St. John's, Newfoundland. Uh, Newfoundland is a place known all over the world for the hardest workers and the most loving people in the world. But we're also known to be heavy drinkers. There's a stigma that Newfoundlanders, they say right away, oh, you must drink a lot. Well, I never drank as a child or nothing. I was a very quiet kid that everybody thought I would be a priest. And... Uh, a very, very quiet kid, you know, growing up. But I think inside a little bit, as much as I wanted to be a great human being, I thought drinking was going to be a part of my life because of the culture I was growing up in. I never started smoking weed till I was about six, 15, 16 years old, and uh, we used to drink Black Tower wine. Uh, we used to love that on Friday, Saturday nights, go to the dances, have a lot of fun. And I was a very shy person. My mom sometimes had to pay me to eat. I wouldn't eat. I didn't want to talk. The weed and the wine uh, kind of made me a bit uh, talkative and I had more fun. You know, I watched my buddies all go around 14, 15, sniffing gas, sniffing glue, everything. I knew it wasn't right. I didn't want to do it. I didn't do it. I watched my buddies do it. And they come from good families, these people. They're, they're very good men in society today. They never, they cleaned their lives up. They never got bad like me. I was the one didn't sniff the glue or didn't sniff the gas, but I got worse than all of them. I was a shy boy, like I said. I remember we moved off of Shea Heights, my, my home where I'm comfortable. It wasn't my home where I was comfortable. Shea Heights in a hole was my comfort. I wasn't scared. I knew I was protected. I felt loved by the whole community. It was a savior. We were moving one time. We were moving off Shea Heights. We were going downtown. I felt like that was so far away. We went to a house, there was, we, there was, a, it was a boarding house we bought. There was five old men left. My mom would not throw them out because they had nowhere to go. We kept them in our house too. There were six of us, my mom and dad. There was my brother's wife and her child. The house was full. I went to Holy Cross. I remember there only during a week. And this buddy gave me a punch in the mouth in the schoolyard, a schoolyard bully. I cried and I felt so bad because I wasn't safe no more. I wasn't on Shea Heights. I didn't know how to protect myself. I cried and took the punch in the face. But it made me mad. I carried that with me. I tried to be a good boy. I remember my little brother getting beat up by another guy. I had to stand up then and I remember I smashed Buddy in the nose and I cracked his nose right in half because he hit my brother. It wasn't a good thing because I found out I had strength to beat people. It wasn't good because I liked it now. Bullies were my enemies. As much as I wanted to be a good boy. I quit school in grade nine. Something wrong with my mind there. Quit school in grade nine. Where was I going? Dead end street. Jail was in my future. Quitting grade nine. It's inevitable. But I decided I'm going to try to avoid jail after a few years out of school. I went back to school, upgrading Fisheries College, Parade Street. 16 months. I used to walk there every day to go to school to get my grade 12. Because I wanted to be a fireman and make a difference in people's lives. But drugs and alcohol took over that. I did acid, I did cocaine, I did heroin once, nearly died. I took a big chug of methadone, nearly died. I took every pill in the world. Uh, probably overdosed a hundred times. I don't know. Put cars off the roads, up trees, everything. All in the name of drugs. 
the fake land of drugs make you a fake person. But it made me strong and happy. I continued to beat bullies up my whole life and smash guys in the head that hit women. I threw guys over the stairs, gave them broken ribs, concussions, stitches, because they hit women. I did not care. But that's wrong. The law takes care of that stuff, not me. But my addictions wouldn't let me do that. I was crazy. When I was walking to Fisheries College to get my grade 12 to be a fireman, I watched all these boys on the street corner, Buckmaster Circle, making all this money. It was admirable. I liked the way they were making the money. It was weed and hash. It didn't hurt no one. I never ate sometimes going to school because I never had the money to mind my dinner or nothing. So I asked them, could I buy a half ounce? Have some, someone lent, give me a half ounce, I'll pay you after. Let me make some money to get some money for buy my food and that for school. They did that. Wrong thing. I was hooked. And immediately I was hooked. Some days I make a thousand bucks a day, fifteen hundred dollars a day, standing on a street corner in my pocket. But I partied hard every night. I didn't want to go home. I had money, power, women now, and I could knock people out. Recipe for disaster. Needless to say, I never became a fireman. I landed up in institutions, prisons, and uh, all over Canada too. Not proud of it. I speak about it today for me, my good only. I want to become a good person. Second, I want to help people. Third, I want to become a great father. There's room for me to become a way better father in my life and I love my children. And I want to be a 10 times better grandfather. For that reason, I got to put out these videos and do this. It's called giving back, the gifts of sobriety. When you get good in your rehab and you're being good in life, you got to give back or God will take back all your good things again. So that's why I do it. It's called giving back. I got to do it. When I don't, my life, life slides back the other way. I need it to go up that way. So if anybody's on my side, please listen to me. I'm just trying to be a good person. I want to love my son that just got married. I love him more than anything in the world, but I could be a better father to my son that just got married. I could be a way better father to my other little son, Blake. I can be a 10 times father to every my children. Nicole, I love you to pieces. I've never been in your life in a while. I love you. I'm becoming a better person because I want to be there for all your children and ye and everybody. I want to babysit. I want to be a good person. I don't want to be bad. And I will never be bad again. And I'm clean two years with two rehabs and all the knowledge. It's not easy. You're still going to have struggles and problems every day. But it's called life. Deal with it. It gets better if you keep fighting. Right? I'm having struggles every day. There's stuff now I got on my mind I can't even tell you on camera. I wish I could. It's struggling. It's, it's, help. it's hurting me now and keeping me back in life. Till I deals with it, I'm going to be still hurting a bit. But I'm going to give all my knowledge to people to help the children. And make my life better. I'm one step away from being the best person in the world. In my eyes, I'm almost perfect, but there's no perfect people, but I'm almost perfect. I got one little situation keeping me back in life. Once that's over, if I survive it and I get through it, there's no stopping me. The freight train is coming, dealing with only addictions. I want to help the children. I don't care what the drug dealers sell drugs. Somebody's got to make a living. Do whatever you want, but don't sell them to children. I don't have no fucking problem with you selling your dope. That's not my business. If God ever took my job and fired me and everything, and I, had to, I might have to sell weed to support my fucking family. I don't know. But it's not right to give dangerous drugs to kids that will kill them, hurt them. Oxycontins, the fentanyl and everything, it should not be on the fucking market. Simple. I'm calling it out to everybody. Sell your weed, your coke, all that, whatever you want to adults, make your money. God bless you. Fill your boots. Make a living. It's hard. The government puts that on you that you got to sell dope to make a living. It's sad, but do it. Whatever. Don't sell it to the children. All right? And as I go with this video and post more videos on YouTube, I'm going to give you more information and tell you about my whole life. Because I know I could help people. If people listen to me, I could change the world with addictions. I'm as good as anybody with addictions. If there's anybody out there that thinks they're better than me with addictions, Fucking cure me. 
Because that's the only thing I can do now is cure my uh, mental disease, disorder, and addictions. I cannot cure it. It keeps me a prisoner every day. But preaching on YouTube is going to cure me and make me a better person. And I'm going to help every struggling addict out there in this world today. Tune into Real Talk Addictions, Harold Williams, and I will help ye get better. Peace out. I love y'all. Now I got to say it. It's all I want in life. If someone gave me a farm for addictions and mental illness, I would never get in trouble the rest of my friggin' life. That's all I want over being a good father, a good worker, a good friend. I like to have my farm for addictions. To help the children, because people really don't care and don't know what they're friggin' doing. You spend millions of dollars on stuff that don't matter. Addictions is very important. Get on board with me and listen. I don't want money, fame, fortune. I want to fucking help. Until I get to my farm, I will not stop with or without your help. But if you want to get better with addictions, tune in to me. God bless. And I don't cry in anger. I cry in pain. I need my whole family now. I'm hurting and I'm clean. But I'm here. I'm a normal person. I'm a good person. I love everybody. I don't judge no one. <laughs>